week's searches are all about space. I guess it will all depend on size. Size matters. Versus location. If you could put that flat. No, don't say, don't say. <laughs> into, that, into that building, number one. Some properties are large. Oh, oh massive. <laughs> it, well, it is. <laughs> wow, this is big. Do we need it? Question mark. While others are tiny. The kitchen's very small. There's nowhere for me to have a vanity desk. You can have a vanity desk in the spare room. Yeah. Question is, do we dazzle? Bing. Ian's looking worried. No, I'm not worried. No. I always look like this. <laughs> <laughs> or will we be frazzled? I think it would shoot straight to the maybe list. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs>London looking for properties with potential. I'm looking for somewhere with restaurants and cocktail bars on the doorstep for a pair of party loving people. Well, I'm looking for a safe haven for violin playing first timer. But in such a pricey patch, will we be able to find all that they want exactly where they want it? This week's house hunters are unanimous about where they want to live. So we're searching in southwest London, an area that's on the up. Amid the urban sprawl, they'll find wonderful commons and the most famous tennis court on the block. I'm scouring the streets with a dad and daughter duo. Trainee solicitor Gemma Pollock is off to her first home in the capital, with a little help from Dad Ian. And I'm on my own doorstep with Sarah Cahalan and Ian Wyatt. <laughs> They're finding renting a bit of a grind and are desperate to buy a home of their own. Sarah and Ian work in financial services. They've been together for three years since their incredibly romantic first encounter. It was a normal night out in Balham. The bus was coming to the stop and it screeched a bit and I got a nudge in the back of me. I was like, what's that? And it obviously, I thought, oh, you're nice. And got off and Sarah followed me into the night. <laughs> you followed me. Oh, well, it was sort of blossomed from there. By day, Sarah and Ian put in long hours in the city, but this pair definitely work to live. At their favourite cocktail bar, they're on first-name terms with the barman. How are you? This cosmopolitan couple currently live in Balham, but they're fed up with renting, so they're pooling their assets to buy their first home. They love their flash lifestyle, but Ian's a bit of a wheeler dealer at heart. I guess people that know me would agree that I do love a bargain, whether it's a drink, a restaurant, you know, getting a cheap holiday, a late deal. I suppose in an ideal world, it would be nicer to transfer that to buying a house. And with the help of Phil and Kirsty, perhaps they can find us a bargain. Yeah. Hope so. Hello. Ian's a man after my own heart. There's nothing I like more than a deal on a house. Even better when it's in my own patch. <laughs> so, Balham. You're now living the dream lifestyle. Your dream lifestyle is here in Balham. We do love it here now, but mm. I think when it comes to buying a house, it would be rolling with my head and, and not my heart. How long have you actually been looking? About six yeah. months. How, how many have you actually been into? Um, one. 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 How does that work out? We wanted to get all our finances in place. I didn't want to go and find my dream property and then go, oh dear, Mr Mortgage Man won't give me a mortgage. In a nutshell then, what are we looking for? I would quite like some outside space. It would be a deal breaker if you showed me an open plan kitchen lounge. Close to transport. I've never been more than, say, seven minutes from a tube. I'll push it to ten. The reality is we're going to have to widen the search. Your budget, or it's a sizeable amount of money, quarter of a million quid, but Balham is a very popular spot and that doesn't buy a very big flat. Yes, I'll show you flats in Balham, but we're going to need to widen it. Sarah and Ian have £270,000 to find a flat with two bedrooms and a separate kitchen, with an easy week to transport links in the Ballam area. While Phil is consuming cappuccinos with his couple, I've come over all classical. My house hunter is Gemma, a 22-year-old trainee solicitor with more than one string to her bow. A high achiever, she hits the high notes in the orchestra she plays with in her spare time and also in her career. I got offered a job with um, a law firm down here. I thought it would be a good idea to get used to living in London. Relocating to London from County Durham has been a massive step for Gemma, so her dad, Ian, is keeping a watchful eye. She thinks she's cleverer than me now because she's a big high shot lawyer with a degree. 
but she doesn't know as much as she thinks she does. Brain box she may be, but street savvy she's not. Green to London, Gemma and her friend have rushed into renting in Peckham, an area where she doesn't feel at home. It's causing Ian to lose a little sleep. We were shown this flat after seeing quite a lot of other ones that weren't very nice. It's not dangerous, but it doesn't have a comfortable feel about it. He is very protective, both my parents are. They always like to know that I've got home if I'm out late on my own. Gemma's determined she wants to live on her own, but she can't afford it yet. So, like up to 80% of first-time buyers under 30, she's getting a little helping hand from her parents. They've generously decided to remortgage the family home to the tune of £80,000. Lots of people invest in property. We're investing in property and in our daughter at the same time. And, you know, we know we're going to get a return on that. Since getting herself in a pickle about postcodes, Gemma swatted up on South London and decided she'd like more of a rural feel for her first home. So, Gemma, it's your fault we're standing here in a freezing <laughs> cold, windy Wimbledon Common. Because this is where you'd ideally like to live. In an ideal world, yeah. You want somewhere that you can come home to which is yours and which is cosy and safe. Yeah. But also that's got the space for, for, for a big sofa bed, for my family to be able to come down and stay when they can. Ian, what's most important to you? In terms of for security for Gemma, we want somewhere where she'll be happy. In terms of the investment side, we want to be able to sell it at some point <laughs> and hopefully get our money back. Do you think with our help and your increasing knowledge of London, we might be able to find you something in an area that you feel a bit better about? That's what I need. I just need someone yeah. to point me in the right kind of areas to where I'll be better off for commuting and things like that. Gemma's a woman who knows exactly what she wants. Hmm, sounds like someone I know. So the sooner we get off this blustery common and start searching, the better. Gemma and her dad have got £200,000 to spend on a one-bedroom flat. It needs to offer decent inside space, resale potential and be in the Wimbledon area. And while you're at it, please may I have a full head of hair? So, hmm. I've either got Princess with overprotective dad hmm. or Sensible Solicitor with engaged and caring parent. OK, it could go either way. It could go either way. Well, I've got a lovely couple who are living this fantastic life in Ballam. They can't actually afford really and truly to stay in Ballam. So it's going to be a bit of a wrench. Our house hunters have picked two of the priciest postcodes around South London, so staying close to the cocktail bars of Ballam is going to cost Sarah and Ian. This area is famous throughout South London for its restaurants and bars. Add in great transport links for commuting to the city and a buzzy town centre and it's clear why these guys love this area. They're not the only ones to have fallen for Balham's charms. I think it's a lovely place to live. You only uh, walk away from a tube or a train or a bus. Oh, it's perfect. You've got the pub down there, Bedford, very notable place. There's a cinema over there. You've got all sorts of little wine bars as well, so it's great. Loads of bars, loads of restaurants, so loads of people mingling. But a two-bedroom flat in Ballam costs around a whopping £370,000. That'd blow Sarah and Ian's budget out the window, so I'm going to hold off showing them properties in Ballam for now. In order to get the space they want, the only thing we can do is move a mile down the road. Tooting is south of Ballam, and it's an area that is still on the rise. Sarah and Ian will get way more house for their money here if they can bear to leave Ballam behind. If your cash can't buy what you want where you want it, then it could be time to stretch the search. Board a bus or take a train to the fringes of your favourite area and you might find some real property gems. It could have character and more space than you've ever dreamt of at a fraction of the price. This first property is on a pretty street and it's close to the tube, so if nothing else, it satisfies Ian's ten-minute rule. This your thoughts of here? Tick. Tick. So far. OK, two stops away from Ballam. It's not the end of the world, is it? No, not at all. I guess okay. it would all depend on size. Size, size matters. Yeah. Size matters. Let's have a look. Good start, Pip. Maybe Ballam isn't such a big deal after all. This two-bedroom flat has the living space arranged over two levels and there's a separate kitchen, which should please Sarah, who's keen to shut the door on the dirty dishes. It's on the market for just under £260,000, which is well within their budget. 
I'm keen to show them how much space they get out here in Tooting because there's a fair amount of it in this flat. Here we are, up the top of the stairs. Dining space, another tick. We get a <laughs> on a roll. <laughs> Um, you've got a dining room. You've got, you've got a dining room. <laughs> Come on up. Come. I like the split level thing. I like the idea of dining there and then yeah. coming here with a glass of wine and just chilling out here afterwards. It's an upside down flat in that your bedrooms are beneath us. Okay. I guess from Sarah's point of view, you just have to be careful when you bring me breakfast in bed. It's going down the stairs, but um... hopeful, isn't he? Ever yeah. hopeful. Why don't the two of you go and have a look at the bedrooms yourselves? Okay. Yeah. And I'll um, catch up with you in the kitchen. There's nowhere for me to have a vanity desk. Be a squeeze oh. down in the corner. Oh, you can have a vanity desk in the spare room, because it's only literally next door. Yeah. Spare bedroom. On a par with what we have now, I'd say. Slightly smaller. You could fit a futon in there, though. Yeah. Welcome to my kitchen. Oh, it's very nice. I love the lounge and that layout. Really do. I don't love it. Do you remember what we said? We said we want a place that we'd be proud to bring our parents to and that our friends would be jealous about. Yeah. I don't think our friends would be jealous of this place. Hmm, this is going to be a really tricky search if I've got to please their friends as well. This week we're with two sets of house hunters searching for lovely locations to suit their London lifestyles. But with tight budgets in a very expensive city, are we on a one-way street to disappointment? I'm with Sarah and Ian. Balham, their perfect area, is too pricey for what they want, and they fail to fall for my property number one, so I'm stretching the search again. And I'm in Wimbledon, trying to get 22-year-old Gemma a first home of her own, with a little help from her dad, Ian. Ian has contributed to Gemma's budget, but Wimbledon is arguably pricier than Balham. A really swanky one-bed flat here can set you back a staggering half a million pounds. Whoa there, can I just remind you of Gemma's budget? We've got less than half half a million pounds. So that means getting all Gemma wants will be incredibly tough. Wimbledon lies seven miles southwest from the centre of London. It's home to the most famous tennis championships in the world. But the real attraction in this area is Wimbledon Village, with its pretty high streets lined with cafes, bars and fashionable boutiques. You would never know you were in London. I think this first property is the ace in the pack. They're going to love the location, which is a stone's throw from the common. So, Wimbledon Common. Yep. It would be hard to find a safer more bird cheeping tree lined <laughs> street than this. Yeah, lovely. I'm quite encouraged. It's a nice, appealing looking building. Yeah. The gardens and grounds are nice, yeah. the area is spot on. Your dad's positive. How positive are you, Gemma? No, I like it. I like the look of the block. I really like the location. I like the security of it as well. Okie dokie. This 1960s building has a smart exterior and the bonus of a secure entry buzzer, which means Ian can sleep easy. It's in beautiful nick. But it's small. Perfectly formed, but small. Will it have enough space for Gemma and her extensive collection of books? It's on the market at £195,000, so it is in budget. So, this flat is really what you were describing. It's little mm -hmm. and it's a nest. Pretty small. Yeah, the kitchen's very small. It's nicely done, though. It's nicely done out of spaces. It's not the smallest I've seen. This property was originally a studio flat. The entire space is about 323 square feet. As well as all her books, Gemma has got a piano to squeeze in. I think I can probably get everything in. I think the piano could go either along here with the television on the wall or even possibly along there. She thinks she can make it work. Good on her. When I bought, with myself and your mother bought our first home, as soon as we walked in the door, we knew we can see ourselves in this. Mm -hmm. Do you get that sort of vibe from it? I do, but. to a certain... <laughs> I, I do to an extent. It's a nice property and it's nicely done. It's whether, with everything in it that was mine, it'd be too much of a compromise. That's what you've got to weigh up. It's yeah. location of its size, isn't it? It's always yeah. going to be the case. Put your feet up, Kirsty. Sounds like they don't need you on this search. So, first flat. Yep. yep. Quite impressed. The only compromise is the size inside. But as you said, there's always a compromise. Well, let's go 
and see some other flats, flats which need a bit of work, and then see where you're at. Okay. Okay. But okay. good start. I've got to admit, what worries me is the fact that she's got more books than clothes. Yes. Because <laughs> You've scored on location, Ms. Alsop, but Gemma's clearly holding out for a bit more space. Fellow first-timers Sarah and Ian weren't convinced by the first property they viewed in Tooting. They're looking for a more impressive house for their money. So I'm taking them to Stratham Hill, which is five miles out of the city, but still close to all their favourite hangouts. This area is not quite another Balham yet, but it's on its way. What they'll find here is a lot more space and maybe even a cafe or wine bar too. This flat certainly packs a punch. If it's space they want, it's got bags inside and out, but there's a compromise and it's an open plan kitchen. It's on just under £280,000, but we've heard the vendor might accept two hundred and seventy, which would bring it in bang on budget. There's a bit more space to cover, so I've got Kirsty along to help. Lovely big light living room here. Mm. Ooh, I like it. Something that we talked about when we first met was... <laughs> yeah, but you can put a door in. Um, it's tiny. It, it is open-ish at the moment. There's no dishwasher. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you are so dead. To compensate for the small kitchen and slightly dodgy jokes, I'm hoping Sarah will be more impressed by the outdoor space. It's a proper vista. Yeah, it's Mary Poppinsville, isn't it? Yeah, on the it chimney really tops. Is. Phil said, outside space, this is something that's on the wish list. But is the outside space really something you're going to use? I think we would need to do stuff to this before there's a jealousy factor. I think I need to have a serious think if this appeals to me more than having a larger kitchen. Get ready for the screech of brakes, Phil. I think your house hunters are about to throw a U-turn. And then up here, we've got the second bedroom. Oh, OK. Yeah, mm. the first thing I thought was, wow, this is big, do we need it, question mark. If it didn't have a second bedroom at all... Yeah. ..that'd be all right? Other boxes, obviously, would, would have to be... be ticks. That, that's something for me to think about. One bed, two beds. Yeah. Like many first-time buyers, Sarah and Ian have been surfing properties online. There is no substitute for getting through the doors. When you see properties in the flesh, what you thought you want can change. Well, there you are. Planning your escape off the roof terrace? Pfft, not far off, actually. I do not want to be searching for the flat based on the nearest cocktail bar. You oh know. dear, you are down in the well, mouth. She, came oh, out. she said about... she wanted a roof to make her friends jealous. I'm actually feeling quite super about it because I've been looking for a two bed flat and it turns out here they don't want to pay for it, the second bedroom because they don't really need it. So I can show them one bed. So my, my world has actually, my options have opened up. I prefer the other place, the first place we saw, because I'm more familiar with, with the area. Yeah, def yeah, exactly. How'd you get on in there? A lot that's lovely about it. Yeah. But a lot that the property has that we would sacrifice. Yeah. To be not necessarily in Balham, but maybe in Tooting Beck. Personally, looking at somewhere in Streatham, I wasn't envisaging viewing a place that was full whack. I'm hearing to come to Streatham, I need dancing girls. So exactly. James Bond's flat. Double O so, Can Can is what he's looking okay. for. Can you provide that? I can, me? actually. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be here to see the Dancing Girls 007. Aww. I know. If I'd known there was that kind of an attraction, so I'd have put off my other house hunts. And... <laughs> <laughs> this pair are proving hard to thrill. Clearly, it's going to take more than a roof terrace to tempt them out here. Over in Wimbledon, I'm trying to find Gemma a bit more space for her first flat on her own. Her dad, Ian, is helping out. We're still in their favourite area and near tennis courts although these ones are perhaps not quite so famous. Being on this busy road means Gemma has great transport links on her doorstep, but handily the property is set back, so it isn't too noisy. This top floor flat has much more space than property one, 86 square feet to be exact, but it needs work if Gemma wants to recreate the style of the first flat. So if Ian's looking for a project, this place could be the one. It's come down in price to £205,000 and I'm confident we could get it for a bit lower, which would bring it in on budget. It's looking very neglected at the moment. Yeah. 
It's Agreed. a nice big spare star. It's nice that it's up on the top floor. It'll be very safe. A lot of work needs doing on first impressions, which is a slight negative. I'll say the problems with the trees outside. It is going to block all the light coming into either of these windows. This property would definitely benefit from having this tree cut down. If Gemma and Ian think this flat is a contender, we could make an offer subject to tree surgery. Gemma likes the space, but Ian's face tells a different story. I don't know how keen Ian really is to do that much work. He's got the experience and capability to tart this place up, but he looked slightly crestfallen when he came in. Like he knew he could do it, but he didn't really fancy coming down to London and putting in a new kitchen and bathroom. But it might be unfair. Ever the sensible solicitor, Gemma's got her practical hat on. My concern was that Obviously, even if we can get it for 200 it then requires my mum and dad to put the money in initially to get it up the standard that we want it to. To me, if you could put that flat... No, don't <laughs> say, don't say. ..into that, into no. that building, yeah. number one, that would be ideal. Yeah. And it would also be £300,000. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. Ian had better watch out. There's a bus approaching. If he carries on with that chat, cos you'll throw him under it. It's a new day, and overnight Sarah and Ian have had a radical rethink about their priorities. After viewing the roof terraced pad in Streatham Hill, they decided that they really don't need two bedrooms after all. My next property is a gem. It's a perfect fit for their new criteria. Streatham Hill may not be their number one location, but we're still only a couple of miles away from their favourite cocktail bars in Balham. This is Streatham Hill. It is. it is. We said to each other yesterday, maybe we're not so sure about Streatham okay. having been there, but we're going to keep yeah. an open Maybe mind. that was the property rather than, you know. OK. I've got a master plan for this next option. Yesterday, Kirsty talked about needing dancing girls to bring these two to Streatham, and I'm confident this plush pad delivers all the bling they could wish for. It's got two double bedrooms and a massive garden with room for a hot tub. Now, that would make their friends green. An open-plan kitchen was a deal-breaker, but I'm not worried one jot. It's on the market at just under £280,000, but I want to show it to them as a previous offer of 260 was accepted and subsequently fell through. Now, what do you think this is? Ooh. I reckon it's open plan. Ooh, it is. <laughs> it is very nice. Very nicely finished. Beautiful while it's nice and clean and tidy. It's my ideal kitchen. What would you say? What would you say? If there's a... If, if this wasn't the living room? Wow, OK. Now... What would you say if this was just the kitchen? I, I would be, uh Stunned. Very, very impressed. Yeah. Da ding <laughs> In actual fact, this is a two-bedroom flat. OK. And they are using it as a two-bedroom flat with a open-plan living kitchen. However, you just put your sofa in one of the bedrooms... Yeah. ..and call this the kitchen... Yeah. ..and you have a very, very smart one-bedroom flat. Mm. It is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. You could stick a sofa in either of these two rooms and leave the kitchen just for cooking and dining. But Ian has other plans. I'm thinking pool table, dartboard, beer fridge, get the lads round and okay. have Watch a the football. Yeah, definitely. I'm guessing that wasn't what you were thinking. <laughs> Jim, absolutely no way. Well, this is going remarkably well. In fact, I'm feeling a little smug about this. I can find dancing girls anywhere, even in Stratham Hill, it turns out. So what's it to be? All very positive in there. It is positive. I think it would shoot straight to the maybe list, definitely. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> That's progress. Ian! Well, I only said because uh, if you'd heard our conversations last night, then it was very much Streatham out. I mean, this has thrown a right spanner in the works with just one property to go, so um, it's... You've uh... given us all singing, all dancing, and I love it. Yeah. Good. And for me, it's it's a 98% contender. But it's not a knockout for Ian. Even though it is the perfect pad for him and his mates, seconds out for round two. This week, we're scouring the streets of South West London for two first-time purchases. But the question remains, just how much are they prepared to trade in order to achieve their dreams of owning their own homes? <laughs> City workers Ian and Sarah didn't love the Stratham Hill property as much as I hoped they would. 
I thought I'd delivered the jealousy factor they were dreaming of, but Ian's proving a tough man to please. So the pressure's on to pull out all the stops on the final property. Trainee solicitor Gemma and her dad have viewed two properties in her preferred area of Wimbledon, but each one felt like too much of a compromise. I've got one last chance to find Gemma a safe haven in the city, so I'm taking her a couple of miles out of her comfort zone. I want to show her how much more house she can get for her money in Tooting, an area that is on the up. It's a really good place to buy property because there's lots of bars coming up and cafes. It's great, you get a lot more space for your money in Tooting. It's, it's a fun place to live. It's the next affordable area in Wandsworth. She started off in Clapham, all the city workers then couldn't afford Clapham so they came to Ballum. Now Tooting's the next one. I'm taking a leaf out of Phil's book and trying out Tooting. And to boost my chances, I've brought the man himself along. His knowledge of this area is legendary. Did you do a paper round round here, Phil? Is that true or is no. that just a myth? No, that's a myth. <laughs> Start a Third round, to a posh with now. <laughs> well, this is the one, number 67, double fronted. We're going to have a look at the flat up there. The front of this Victorian villa looks a little neglected, but work to tart it up will be done, dusted and, most importantly, paid for before any sale goes through. If the communal parts of the property clearly require work, check whether there are any existing plans and funds to carry this out. This upper conversion flat has a lovely communal garden at the rear and inside there's plenty of space. There'll be no problem fitting all Gemma's books and her piano in here. It's on the market for £195,000, which is £5,000 under Gemma's budget. This is the largest of the three properties by far, but is there space enough to tempt her to tooting? Come on in. Welcome to 480 square feet. Uh -huh. Oh, massive. <laughs> It, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's certainly big enough for you and for guests and visitors mm -hmm. to stay. It's spacious, that's the first thing you say, because of the high ceilings make it look bigger. It's nice, this space would be big enough for people to stay, which is, which is good. I've got an idea how Gemma could make the most of this space. This is currently the bedroom. OK. I think it should be the sitting room. Right, OK. There would have been a fireplace there, which you could reinstate. You could have all your books there. Switching the bedroom with the sitting room would allow Gemma to use this attractive space for entertaining. And the ceiling height is so good. It's lovely. Yeah. It really is nice. And it does make it feel bigger and lighter. At this point, do you want to run back to Wimbledon? Initially, but I think the flat's making me hesitate slightly because of how much potential there is in it and how big it is. Gemma's coming round to this place. But although she won't be living with her dad, if he's not smiling, she won't be taking on tooting. I know the two things that are most important to you are safety of Gemma and the safety of your money. I'm not saying we don't think she feels safe. It's just somewhere where she can... She doesn't feel nervous walking back on a night and... She doesn't feel nervous or, or you don't feel nervous about um, her? <clears throat> Probably the latter. If I had a daughter, I would be wanting to make sure she was absolutely safe. Yeah. Well, in your honest opinion, you think she's better off buying a bigger place further away? I think your money would be safe in both. Yeah. I think you'd probably make more money here, but there are greater risks involved, because it's not absolutely prime. So, location, 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 isn't it? Yeah. That's what she has to look mm. at. I think this is a cracking flat, which delivers on both space and investment potential. But is this location right for Gemma? What do you reckon? I like it. It's very big. It's the area I'm not entirely convinced on. Sure. It's not Wimbledon, sure. which is what I know and what, yeah. what I like. It's absolutely fine. And from a safety perspective, really no problem at all. Phil Much says safer than where you, where you okay. are now. Gemma says she's not sure. <laughs> just, just leave your number with Gemma. If she's got any problems, she'll give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> OK, see you okay, soon. See you. Before making any decision on a property, it's important to do your homework. Revisit the location at a different time of day to get a feel for the dynamic. And if, like Gemma, getting to work fast is top of your list, it's a good idea to road test your journey. Well, there seems to be plenty of buses going from this area. Yeah, I think there's several that go to central London as well, which could be quite useful for a night and things. Oh, yeah. Gemma and her dad Ian are tempted by the space on offer in Tooting. While Sarah and Ian seem willing to sacrifice space for location. Sarah loved the Streatham party pad, but we've found something back in Ballam that they just have to see. 
we've searched over 40 properties in Ballam, and this one is head and shoulders above the rest. Okay, okay. well, this is your patio, garden chair, and your own front door. It's a lower ground flat in their dream location, but there's a big compromise. This is almost 200 square feet less than the biggest of the Stratton properties. Having seen what they can get elsewhere, will the size on offer here be enough for them? Phil, you're pushing your luck. That's another open plan kitchen. This flat is 5,000 over their budget, but the vendors need to sell fast, so I'm confident they'd accept a lower offer. Wow. This is the best one bedroom flat on the market in Ballam at the moment. Yeah, I can see why, definitely. I like it. I love it. Although, I've shut the doors. That's the kitchen. Wow. It's nice. It's small and I don't care. Yeah, it's also slightly open plan. Do you care about that? No, it's definitely got doors. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's open plan. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Who would have thought? So, go and have a look at the bedroom, bathroom, and take a bit of time to think it through. Wow. I was not expecting that. No. I really like it. I was taken by surprise. I love it. Mm. And we're on our doorstep. This has got so much more space than I was expecting. Sarah loves this place. It's written all over her face. She seems to have forgotten all about impressing her friends. Very spacious. Again, we've seen a lot smaller than this, haven't we? This is the smallest flat we've shown them, but it's having the biggest impact. Yeah. Really impressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having come from somewhere that was two bedrooms, massive garden, all the bells and whistles, two one bed, low ground, no garden, open plan kitchen. Phil, there's space out there, there's a bench. <laughs> I think because of the unexpected space that we've got here, personally, it, it doesn't matter. There's no room for a pool table here, but that hasn't deterred Ian. Or his desire for a bargain. It's on at 275. Yeah. There is some flexibility in that because the people who own it have already had an offer accepted on where they want to buy up in North London. So they're kind of under the cosh a bit. Scope for a bit of a deal then? Definitely. Brilliant. This flat really crystallised their dilemma, and it's all about the location. They both love it, but are they ready to give up all that lovely space in Streatham? Take the night and think about it. Meanwhile, I make a call to the agent and say, look, they are seriously thinking about this overnight. I'll come back to you first thing in the morning. OK. This is the smallest of all the properties I've shown them, but is it enough? If Sarah and Ian do decide they want the Ballam flat, we'll need to act smart before someone else snaps it up. And one way I can stay ahead of the pack is by registering their interest with the agent. If you're thinking seriously about a property, contact the agent to let them know. It shows the vendor that you're keen and it could help you get one up when it comes to the offer stage. Over in Tooting, Gemma and Dad have managed to get to grips with an area they knew very little about. They've decided to forego her fixation with location in favour of a second view at property number three. So it's back to the spacious Victorian villa in Tooting. Is this little oasis of tranquility enough to lure Gemma away from her beloved Wimbledon? We spent a long time looking around Wimbledon. I think we realised then that we weren't going to get what I wanted size-wise in Wimbledon. From my perspective, I think it's a good investment. Uh, this is I a very good investment, we, yeah. If it wasn't my daughter, it was just a cold, hard investment. Yeah. No problem at all. But she's got to live here. Right, now, interestingly, guys, when you come in here, it will not look like that. Ian, just behind you, just pick up that piece of... In the next six to eight months, those are going to be restored. Take a hell of a difference, won't it? Yeah. It will be fantastic. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah, you want to go and have a look up in the flat? Yeah. One last time? OK. Ian ain't letting the grass grow under his feet. He means business. He's just through the door and he's already decided what he wants. Me, personally, I think it's worthwhile putting an offer in on it. I think Gemma's come around to that way of thinking as well, if I'm right. Yeah, I do like the flat. I really like the flat. We, think... we wouldn't want to go away and say, well, think about it, yeah. and then you lose it. Okie doke. Well, let's go and find somewhere we can make an offer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
for Gemma, it's all starting to sink in. The dream of owning her first home is in sight. Bye-bye, building. Hope to see you when you've been repainted. That could be ours. Yep. Now it's time for the serious part. My work won't be done till the deal is. For Sarah and Ian, there are two flats in the running, and it's all about space versus location. Will they choose Bijou in Ballum or Spacious in Streatham? Well, it's going to be an interesting day. They've asked to meet me here at the one in Streatham Hill, but I've no idea whether it's to rule it in or rule it out. Wait and see. So what are we here to see? I think we need one last look at this just to decide which is the front runner. OK. Yeah. Off to you. Help yourself. Can they really sacrifice all this lovely space? It's still big. It's pretty lovely, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Big and bright. Big, yeah. bright, clean. Actually, it's boiling down to you've gained one room and you've gained the garden. Or do they want to have a few more years of living the dream in Ballum? Are you happy to give all this up? Because obviously it was you that said about the outside space. And you're right, that is all we've got in Ballum. It is stunning, but I think this is a tease of what our second property is going to be like. Yeah. I think I, I think I love it less than Ballum. What? The lounge area? Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sarah's fallen hard. We're seeing a whole new side of her. But Ballam is definitely a front runner. Yeah, but not a bad consolation prize if that doesn't no, work I agree. out. Let's see. Revisiting the Streatham flat has confirmed that their hearts belong to Ballam. But that flat is at the top of their budget. Like all first time buyers, Sarah and Ian are keen to keep their costs down. If they pay one penny over £250,000, they will have to fork out an extra £7,500 in stamp duty. So if they decide to go for Ballum, Ian's going to want to bag himself a bargain. Well, we've been around the houses, but we've ended up back in your local in Ballum. Yeah. I can't help but notice you on the wine, calming the nerves. <laughs> <laughs> So, is it going to be Ballon then? 100 million percent. Yeah. Love it. And that's a joint decision. Ian, you happy? Absolutely. We've been singing from the same hymn sheet yeah. all along. Yeah. Does it mean that Streatham's completely out of the running? It's going to all depend on um, how far we can push the vendors at Ballon. It's on at 275, as you know. Yeah. yeah. So, it would be great to get that under the stamp duty, 250. Mm. Happy with me going this, 250? Yeah, go on. See how you get on. <laughs> Nervous. How are you feeling, Ian? I'm trying to play it cool, <laughs> but inwardly, yeah, nervous as well. It's a brave offer, almost 10% below the asking price. If I can pull this off, it'll be a steal. Could go either way. with two sets of first-time buyers in south-west London. We've all been caught up in the age-old fight between space and location, and in the end, it's one all. Gemma and her dad have chosen space, Sarah and Ian have gone for their dream location. Now it's up to us to seal the deals. Gemma and her dad, Ian, have set their hearts on Wimbledon, but instead they've been seduced by the extra space and investment potential of the Tooting flat and need me to bag a bargain for them. We've heard an offer has already been rejected, so there's no time to beat about the bush. Property number three, do you want to make an offer on it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The asking price is 195. It's going at 187. It's an offer at 182. 187 is five, five more grand. than yeah. that. Yeah. 187? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Riz, it's Kirsty. I've had a conversation with my clients. We think that an offer of 187 would indicate to your clients that we're very serious about it. OK, bye. Ian's looking worried. No, I'm not worried. No. I always look like this. <laughs> <laughs> the agent is quick to return my call. Riz. Right. Right. 
Right. What are they planning to do? Thank you so much. Obviously, you know. <clears throat> he said they want something nearer to the asking price. You don't want to go any higher, do you? If we up it, yeah. it's got to be a final offer. You can't continue going up and up. No. My only concern is that there was another offer on the table at the weekend. And if they then want to get back in touch again and get told so we're I... putting 187 and they go with 190. Okay, I'll tell you what I'd be inclined to do. Yeah? Offer 190 and say, if it's not acceptable, we'll leave it on the table. OK. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's crunch time. I've got one last stab at clinching this property. A mile and a half across town, Sarah and Ian have decided to sacrifice space to be in their dream location of Ballam. And we're going for a brave offer that's 25,000 beneath the asking price of 275,000 pounds. Ian's a man after my own heart when it comes to getting a deal and Sarah has lost hers completely to this flat. I'm feeling the pressure. Hi, how are you? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Well, I can help you in that regard, because I do have now a confirmed offer of 250. If they don't get it, then they'll, they'll buy this other one in Streatham. Thanks, Lucy. Cheers, bye. She said they're open to offers. Well, they're open to... Yeah. That offer. That offer, 25 grand off the price, is, yeah. is perhaps a different matter, but the die is cast. This will be a real coup if this comes off. It will be a real coup. Over in Tooting, Gemma and Ian are on tenterhooks. For my money, that was too quick to be positive. Hello. <laughs> wow! That's remarkable. You said no. <laughs> Are you pleased, Ian? I'm pleased, yeah, of course I'm pleased. You're pleased? Yeah, that's brilliant. You're happy with the price? Yes. Gemma, are you yeah. pleased? Yeah, very pleased. You've got yourself an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I've got the last of my mine left. I'm just going to have to do this little... <laughs> Call that a fanfare. I'm one up on you, Mr Spencer. Can you make that a double? Hi, Lucy. What news? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. 250. And will you take that off the market? Thank you so much. Superb news. Very happy at this end. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Oh, mwah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that is oh, terrific. 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 Oh my god, Absolutely I wasn't fantastic. expecting that. I think we should have a proper drink, don't Absolutely. you? Cocktails it is. It is indeed. <laughs> Game set and match. Two pairs of happy house hunters, two dream homes. Make mine a mojito, Phil. Here we go. Fantastic. Who cares if it is lunchtime? time? Cheers. Cheers. Well done. Here's to being jammy. Mmm. Here's to cocktails in Ballam. Well earned cocktail in Ballam. All the time. Two months on, it's builder's tea all round. Sarah and Ian haven't moved into the flat yet, but they're close to completion. Today, they're back with Sarah's DIY dad in tow, who's advising on a few home improvements. Yeah, you, you get a boiler in there. Uh, I want to paint all the ceilings and walls. I want to clean all the carpets. I want to stick some dehumidifiers in just to rid any damp from the walls. Maybe, and... a, maybe a bed. That might be nice. Sofa, perhaps. How wide is that? We were on holiday in Egypt just recently and we did see a really nice chaise lounge. Just as so when people walk in they go, oh wow. And I'm pretty sure their friends are gonna like the location too. I, I think we were surprised as well as relieved um, that Phil managed to find us, well, A in Ballam and B um, on budget. 
A perfect pad in the perfect location. Champagne, anyone? Over in Tooting, Gemma's property is getting that much-needed facelift in preparation for her moving in. But how is she feeling about the area now? I do like it. I know I was a bit unsure when we put the offer in, but it's taken a while, but I do really like it. I'm really looking forward to it now. One of the advantages of having the bigger flat is being able to get everything in as I wanted. The piano has to go up two flights of stairs, which will be Dad's job again, which should be, it should be quite fun on moving in day. Gemma's finally going solo and her student days are most definitely over. In a couple of months, I'll be working full time um, in the job that I've been aiming for for years. I think having a flat and having the job, it really feels like I've got to grow up a bit now, I guess. Um, no more parents on the doorstep to help anymore. Two happy sets of first time buyers off to a great start in their own homes. <laughs>